to another Care Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse. This week it appears I've caught something of a cold, so I apologize for my scratchy voice. So I thought this week it would be fitting to show you guys how to get the scratches out, out of your surface finish that is, using SolidWorks surfacing. Here I have a component that I would like to machine. I have some basic 2.5 axis features, but I also have a spot that I'm going to need to run some 3 axis toolpath on. My approach to running 3 axis toolpath in CamWorks is typically to add my multi surface feature to all displayed. This way, I'll let it machine anything that it can find, and then I'll go back in and tell it what not to machine. This is just my personal preference. We can see here that my area clearance has found this pocket in the middle and has started work on it, while the pattern project is running a basic projection onto all surfaces in that direction of my mill part setup. Now the first thing I notice is that both my area clearance and the pattern project are actually falling down into this hole at the bottom. I'll be machining this hole from the back side, so I don't need either of these two tool paths doing any of the work to machine this hole. Now typically what we would do is we would go along in here and add an avoid area. So that's what I'll do here. I'll right click on my area clearance, say new avoid area, and I'll select the hole as a region to avoid. I need to machine everything surrounding it, so I'll leave my offset to zero, but I do want to make sure that I'm using the machine over option. So let's slide down towards the bottom, and we'll choose machine over. If I don't choose machine over, I'll be left with a column running all the way up to the top. We'll say OK here. I'll update my operation. And now we'll see that the area clearance is not falling down into that hole anymore. However, my pattern project still is. Now because I'm using the same avoid area in one to the other, I'll simply copy. I'll expand out both operations and simply control drag one to the other. Now I'll regenerate the toolpath from my pattern project. Now we can see that my pattern project no longer falls through that hole either. While we're here, let's add a contain area. My contain area, I want to be this top ridge, so I'll select these edges. This contain area will keep the toolpath from coming out and landing on the top surface. And there we have it. Now this is a very valid technique, and other than the coverage of our pattern, there's still something that I don't like about this technique. We have a hard time controlling how the tool will come up and treat this edge as it comes up and loops back down. Also, if we look from the side, we see that our avoid area causes this skip in the toolpath. Now this might be okay, but I'd much prefer that my toolpath continue on the same slope that it was going rather than abruptly stop and then fall off the edge of my avoid area. Now the reason for this is because our avoid area is actually just a planar projection of that hole. And we can see that if we look at the avoid area itself. Here we see it's just a plateau. And if we look down into the hole, we can see there's that gap. So the tool comes down along, hits the avoid area, and then falls off and continues. Now there may be other ways in CamWorks that we can go about trying to rectify this issue, but because CamWorks is built into SolidWorks, we've got all the power of the SolidWorks modeling tools at our disposal, and my favorite way is to use surfacing to fix this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a surface representation of this pocket that I'll need to machine. And in order to do that, I'll use offset surface. Now I've got to select these faces, which I already have all in one color. So I'm going to use my power select, and we'll pick up that face color. I've checked on face color, I'm looking for faces, and we can pick from the graphics area to choose what color we're searching for. Here I've picked up these faces, so now we can offset. Now an offset surface, I wanna make sure my value is set to zero, and this turns the tool into the copy surface. We can say okay. CamWorks is noticing that something has changed with the model, and I'll just ignore those changes for the moment. Now here's where things get interesting. 
What this process has done is isolated only the portion that I want to machine with this specific toolpath. So I'm going to hide the solid body for a moment. I'm using 2016, so I'll just hit my tab key. And from here, we can clean up the surface a little bit. Now this hole at the bottom is causing me some trouble, and I really don't want this toolpath to even notice that there's a hole there at all. So all we'll do is I'll select that edge, I'll hit delete on my keyboard, and that launches me into the delete hole option. I'll say OK, and that will patch that surface. Now, when I machine to this surface body, the toolpath won't even realize that there's a hole underneath it. Likewise, I'll extend this surface upwards so I can continue the tool on its same trajectory that it was already on out of the pocket and then back in. To do that, I'll use the Extend Surface tool. And we'll extend all the way around. This is a little sloppy here, but shouldn't be an issue. Now we'll go back to Camworks and we'll machine the surface body instead of the faces of the solid body. I'll just create this as a new feature, that way we can see the difference. I'll just use all displayed because I have the solid body hidden. We'll use the same area clearance in a pattern project. Now we have two multi-surface features, and I'll process my new one. We'll go ahead and create our toolpaths. And now we see that those tools on the bottom don't even realize that hole was ever there. From here, I can create a new contain area along my top edge. This would allow me to continue my toolpath up over the top if I wanted to. Now my operation failed to generate, and it's likely because I'm binding up on one of my edges. I'm going to give this a little more room to breathe and add an offset. That's better. And now we see a much smoother result. Now this pattern isn't the best option, so let's switch that over. And we'll use a radial. That looks quite a bit better. Now again, we've got a nice smooth toolpath along the bottom. We've got room to extend out past the ridge and come back down where we didn't before. I think this is a great technique and it's one I use quite frequently when machining 3-axis components. Well, I hope you found this tip helpful and I hope to see you back next week. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.